if you have a project that you work on consistently and you're manually deploying it every time you make a change, you're wasting a lot of time. And I'm going to tell you today what I use in my app Rhodes and also some of my other websites to keep this process really quick, really easy, and how it actually saves me so much time. So first off, this is something that you shouldn't really worry about and do if the project you're working on isn't deployed often. So I guess what I mean by that is, let's say you have a mobile app that you're working on and you're going to try to get the first version out. This isn't something to worry about just to get the first version out. And in fact, I think you should not set this up until you get the first version out and maybe you have manually deployed like two, three, four, five different uh, updates to it just to make sure that this project is something that you're going to be continuously working on. Because setting this up does take some time and it could it could actually end up being a waste of time it, to set it up for something that you don't actually end up working on over the long distance. Now, I guess that being said, for websites, I think setting this up is a lot easier. There's some there's some pretty obvious, easy tools. Basically, any hosting platform is going to let you do auto deploys, and really, that's what the topic of this is: is like auto deploying your code. So, for example, if you have kind of a landing page, maybe you built it with Next.js. If you are hosting that on Netlify or Vercel, they have they have kind of auto setup hooks so that anytime you merge uh, to main, it'll just auto deploy it. And that's really kind of the the core idea of all of these is is you have your your production branch, which is normally the main branch in GitHub. And anytime you merge code into that branch, it should just kick off the deploy. If you have tests, it can it can run the tests first and and then decide if all those tests pass, then it does the deploy. If not, it'll alert you and and you'll have to fix that. But the so that's that's pretty easy to set up with websites. With a mobile app, however, this can be a little bit more of a challenge. And what I've been using in my Flutter app is Code Magic, and this is a pretty I think I think this is actually a pretty popular tool to use for especially Flutter apps and mobile apps. But it really does make this setup so much better, so much easier. And I was actually able to set it up pretty quickly. I would say in a few hours I had it set up and able to, to have that exact same kind of thing happen when I merge my app code, my Flutter app code into main. So I would definitely recommend checking out that and setting up the, like setting that up for your Flutter app because it really, it's, it's really kind of amazing how much time that saves. To manually build a Flutter app every single time you want to deploy it, I think I think every time I would do it, it would take at least you know, 20, 30 minutes to do Android and iOS. And now with this, I just, I kick off the, you know, I merge to main and then, and then it does take about, for my app, it takes anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes to, to compile it and build it but I don't have to do anything. It's, it's just building in the background. And then it even goes as far as submitting it to Google and Apple and that's it. Like it'll get approved and and that's it. So yeah, I merge to main and then Google typically will be is quicker in the approval process. So maybe within an hour, the app is live on Google and then Apple sometimes takes, you know, about a day. So within the next day, it's it's live on on the app store and i i mean in this i'm not going to go through the technical details of how to set this up in code magic but if you do want to kind of see a step by step guide on that i guess let me know and i could i could consider making a video for that for the youtube channel but yeah i would be i would definitely be interested what other tools people are using this i guess this concept is called continuous integration or continuous like continuous deployment and if you're working by yourself and you don't have, you know, multiple people that are potentially merging different things, I don't think the testing is as big of a deal because you know when you're about to merge into main, if the app is has been tested, you should have tested it by that point locally or however you however you would normally test it. And then merging it is kind of, uh, it would be the same thing as if you're manually deploying. But if you do have a bigger team or you're working with several people, it does probably make sense to at least put a couple checks in there that are that are being checked that you know that are happening before it gets deployed. 
And that could be as simple as setting up something where before it gets actually merged into main, you have some things set up in GitHub to, you know, require a review or require the PR to be, yeah, the PR to be reviewed by someone else. And that could be, that could be useful as well. A lot of this you can also do in GitHub itself, not the, not necessarily the deployment part, but you can do a lot of, uh, you can do a lot of automations within GitHub on merging and on, like that could be a trigger, like on uh, a pull request or on merging to a specific branch like main. And I guess depending on your workflow, that could definitely also be useful. Really, I would get, I guess, to, to kind of like distill what the idea of this is, is that anytime you're spending a lot of time waiting for the same process to happen, such as like building your, you know, building your release version, like what is your process of doing that? And if the process of doing that has several steps, you can automate those steps and you should automate those steps because every time you're building it, you're wasting that time essentially. So it's kind of a, yeah, it's a weird trade-off because initially you do have to kind of put a little bit more upfront time in getting it set up. But once it is set up, it's such a better developer experience to the point where I used to not deploy as frequently because I would not want to wait. The deploy was like such a, like more of a time consuming process. And I would, you know, even if I made a quick little change, I'd be, I would wait and save it for maybe, maybe I would deploy like once a week and I would save it till I had, you know, the, um, like more changes worth deploying. Now I'll, I'll make a change and deploy a no problem. You know, I could deploy a, I, at most, I probably with, with the mobile app, I at most will deploy like once a day, like at the end of the day. And that's only because of that, of that time that Apple takes to approve it. So yeah, there's that. You also don't need it to auto send to the store. So you could have it still do the build, send it to Apple, and then you can do your test flight or your, uh, you know, you could do your testing and do your final review and update stuff there manually if you want to, but you don't have to spend that time waiting for the build to happen. So yeah, hopefully this was kind of a maybe useful topic for some of you to hear. If you haven't set this up yet, I would definitely recommend it. The other good thing about Code Magic is it has a really good free tier. So there's really no cost to this. And if you aren't deploying your app, I think I calculated, I think they give you 500 minutes, like build minutes. So as I said, my app takes about, let's say 15 minutes to build. That ends up being, I think I could do like roughly 50 builds a month. And that's all on the free tier. So that's a that's pretty good especially if you're uh you know a one-man team and just doing it yourself you're probably not going to actually build more than that much per month for one app so yeah definitely i would recommend trying it out and let me know if you have any questions or thoughts on kind of continuous integration to get early access to these conversations and contribute with your own thoughts, join the One Man Startup channel on Rhodes Audio today by going to onemanstartup.com slash join Rhodes.